What's up, everybody out there in TV land? You're watching ETV on Comcast Channel 19. And as you can see, still got my world TV title, baby. And I got new shirts. <laughs> Check it out on MySpace or at the next show, October 18th. Watch it, buddy. <laughs> Before that match, you got into a little bit of beef with Acid. Tell us how that went. Uh, well, he came out and, and he wasn't even wrestling at the time. He was just promoting what the belts were going to look like for the company. And I figured, I'm in the main event. I might as well come out there and make an appearance. Figuring I was the, I had the best opportunity to win that match because of my, uh, uh, my credentials, where I was coming from. I was coming right out of IWA Mid-South. I was going to Philadelphia. I was going to Alabama, I was doing it all. I was, I was traveling, and I got the most experience I'd owned in that match. So I figured I'd make an appearance, go out there. And, and you know, when, when, I was, when I was one of those guys in the crowd watching the boys wrestle, I loved watching Acid. Acid was, what, uh, next to Vito, uh, he was my favorite guy to watch. At the time, he had green hair. Uh, he doesn't have hair anymore. He's got the power rail he's going, so he shaves his head. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it was just cool to go out there and talk to him, but at the same time, I wanted to show him that uh, the young guy can come out there and trump the older guy. Because at the time, I was doing what he quit. He quit the business. And uh, really, if you look at him now, uh, he's a friend of mine now, so I don't, I don't mind talking like this. If you look now, he's doing great for himself. But if it wasn't for this guy right here, the world title on his shoulder, he wouldn't be teaming with Sin and Team War and then doing what he's doing. So uh, I had a little altercation with him. And uh, if you get the DVD off EliteProWrestling.com, uh, you can check it out, and you can see what it then later happened in the main event. Sin was elim eliminated first, and then Mike Nolan came out and decided to trump you back. Uh, tell us how that went. How to go, and how it went. Guy came out, I just uh, gorilla pressed acid jazz over the top rope like I was Ultimate Warrior, down on the floor, and I'm marking out with myself, thinking how great I am. I'm gonna win this belt. Count these guys out, double count out, Brandon Tom Sully, heavyweight champion. And I, I hear the crowd erupt, and I'm thinking, these guys really do love me, you know? Turn around, boom, whack right in the head with the chair by none other than Acid, my, my good buddy. And, uh, you know, that later, or that, that stemmed the next month's show, and that, that brought Mike out of retirement. I was excited to see Acid come back as a fan, but at the same time, I had a job to do. I knew that as a young guy in the business, I had to prove to him that he either 
no longer belongs here, or he can be a staple in, in, in the wrestling business again in the Chicagoland area. And after that match, I truly believe that after the chops and the forearms, I had to wear a headgear, my ear was busted, I ended up taking that off, and we, we beat the crap out of one another. And I gotta say that guy had my respect after that match. Even though I wouldn't want to admit it back then, uh, I consider Mike a very good friend of mine now, and, and I know he go to bat for me, just gotta go, back, go to bat for him. And uh, it felt cool, especially when the lights went off, even though owner of the company gets the lights off. I want the lights off myself, they said no, it happens. But no, it, it felt good, and uh, I'm just glad to see where we're at today compared to where we were at back then. Acid, Brandon Tomaselli, an MMA style of rules with an elite pro twist to it. A big match for the company. Tell us how that went for you. Oh wow, well, at the end it didn't go good for me, but as, as the match started, I felt very comfortable in the ring. I, I, was a, I was a state champion when I was a kid in, in kids wrestling, junior high. I was a four year varsity wrestler, three time section qualifier. You know, I, I knew my ground game could stop his. It's, it's the, the strikes I had to look out for from for Masson. And I felt I held my own against him. Um, I don't want to say he got lucky, you know, but he got me. He tapped me right in the chin with a knee, and it was a big flying knee, and I was out for the count. So, uh, in fact, I think you were the referee for that match. Yeah. What you had to go through as far as preparing for that match? Well, another unique thing, again, Elite Pro is always looking for something they can do first. And I've never seen this before. It was a, the only way to be eliminated was you had to be bleeding match, six man elimination match. Yes. So it was bloodbath, very rightfully named. On paper we were done. But if you went out there and you see the match, you saw that we went out there and we beat the piss out of one another. And then it was a bloodbath, rightfully named. And uh, we didn't come out on top, but again, Stuff happens, and you know you never know. You know it's the wrestling business, and someone get lucky, get a good strike in, or get a chair at the back of that. Uh, a new concept for Elite Pro. How'd that go? Uh, very unique. Again, Elite with the uniqueness, and went out there, and I, I was lucky enough to get the first fall. Because in that match, the person who gets the first fall gets to sit out for the next fall. Gets a break. Gets to get a little bit of a break. I went there's commentary. Did what I do best, which is talk, and uh, made fun of some guys. And I, I handled my business. Um, it felt good to win. What the, the worst part about that win was the wait until the show, the big show when this belt was finally on the line. Chase Richards unfortunately couldn't make it to the show. I, I don't know. I think he had four flat tires on a motorcycle. I, I okay. Uh, so Corporal Robinson, who was the Iron Man of that show, took his spot. And it was lucky enough for me, it was Corp, Corning, and myself on one team, Ash, Old Timer, and Jensen on the other team. And uh, Ash got the first fall on Horning. So I was out there, and uh, we, we ended up doing a punch-off, or a bar fight, which is a, another thing that... Elite Pro hasn't really seen, but if you go to IW Mid South, CZW, you'll see it a lot with the hardcore guys. Corporal Robinson was in the match, therefore you get a bar fight. The lucky thing for me in that was I ended up staying in the ring, other guys spilled out, old timer came at me with his massive bear hug, I fought her off, I hit him with the deal, one, two, three, I'm in the finals for the match, me and Ash. How did that play into eventually making you an underdog in the third fall? To make me even more of an underdog in the first fall, or in the third fall, Ash came and bit me from behind with a chain around his fist. Wow. That's how much he was scared of me. <laughs> and, uh, you know, well, we all see what happened. I don't know why Vito chose sex, drug, and wrestling instead of coming and talking to me first, but we'll talk about that later too, Norris. Uh, it made me an underdog. He, uh, he got it on me. He was beating me up, beating me up. But at the end of the day, there's only one thing, and it was the deal, and it got me the victory. Your, your first television title defense was scheduled to be against Billy Rock, but before that happened, you took the belt over the borders and defended it in Canada. Tell us how that went. I uh, went good. I, I got called by Ontario All-Pro to come up and run work for them, and I was the TV champion, and I, I got a hold of the office of Elite, and I said, hey guys, listen, 